You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. One-year-old Kane Corso, he's reactive to dogs, okay with people once he gets to know them. My goal in this session was to get this dog in situations where he's meeting dogs to teach these owners what situations they can put him in, whether they need to give corrections, whether they need to not give corrections and let the dog express himself, which is a very real thing. But sometimes if a dog is a jerk to a very nice dog, they need a correction. You're going to see both. You're going to let, you're going to see me let some things go, barking and lunging. You're going to see me correct the dog when it's appropriate. You're going to see this dog meet Prince. You're going to see me train this owner. You're going to see all of it. And I'm going to slow down some subtle body language, which is going to happen here in a few seconds. I'm going to show you some subtle body language that you can pick up on in your own dog or in your own life so that you know if a dog is going to bite you, is going to bite your dog, is going to not bite your dog. Okay, here's the first one right here. He sees the camera person. Camera person's holding a camera. It's pretty red. Look at this look right there and then a look away. What in your gut, how does that hit you? How did that look to you? Did it look good? Did it look, it was, it was a very good sign. He looked at the camera person who's holding this weird thing. And he basically said, I don't want to look at her for too long because I, I don't want her to think I'm, I don't want to scare her. Or I don't her, want her to scare me. He did this kind of look and he's like, what is that camera? And then he did that look away. That showed me this guy's not looking to bite anybody, which I don't know. He came five minutes before this right? He hasn't said hi to me. He's whined. It showed me this dog, this dog doesn't want to bite anybody. Now, because I met the dog five minutes ago. I, I don't know. I don't know whether he'll bite me or bite the camera person when he's in a high stress situation. I have to start to eliminate triggers and go, okay, he's not going to bite me. He's not going to bite the camera person. Great. Let's move on. Okay. Now he's unleashed barking dogs. Now will he bite me? Now will he bite the camera person? Now will he bite the dog? Right there, it showed me and it showed you, this guy's not looking to bite anybody. Great, check that off the list. Let's move on to dogs. Now he's gonna see Prince for the first time on the deck. First dog meeting, he he, he hasn't met dogs in his life. He had a couple bad incidents at a dog park, took him back, so he sees Prince. How many dogs have you seen freak the heck out right there? That's not this dog. Now, you're gonna see him not want to meet any dogs, but the dog is not this crazy lunger. I want to hurt other dogs. This dog has hold back in him, which I love when dogs have hold back in them. We can work with hold back. Here's some original audio. Bro, I like it. You know how many dogs come out here and freak the F out when they see a dog? Look at that broken fence. That, like this is a subdued, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to be bothered. It's not great. I don't want him growling at Prince. I do not see the dog that's freaking the hell out. I see, it's great, man. Keep walking. But that's not enough. We have to get this dog close to dogs. We can't just do 30 feet away from another dog behind a fence. And freaking out, barking, lunging. But I want you to watch this second bark and lunge. You tell me if this is a bark or a lunge that has intent to bite. And then I'm gonna slow it down for you, okay? So it's, it's gonna come in just a second. I want you to viscerally, it's very important what your, what your gut tells you about this bark and lunge right here. Ready? It looks bad, but is it bad? Is it bad? Here it is in slow-mo. Looks bad, actually looks worse in slow motion. I want you to tell me if it, if it is bad though. Okay, what do you think? Is it terrible? No, it's not. It just isn't. He has hold back in him. The owner gives a correction. I would too. You can't sit there and let your dog bark and lunge constantly. But it's just, you've seen dogs go at that fence, stare at the other dog in the eye, try to jump up on that fence, track prints running along that fence and stare at him in the eye. This guy is saying, please get out of here, other dog, or dad, please take me away, which the guy took him away, which is fine because because the dog had calmed down, but we're not going to, we're not going to take you away when you're freaking out. Now I try to take the leash. He's yeah. growling. I don't know if you you're can okay. hear it. He's growling at me right there. He's unsure. He just met a dog. He's at a new place. This is not the time for me to take the leash and put this dog over threshold. Now, oh, over threshold. Oh my gosh. Forest free trainers. The dog can never be over threshold. That's not true. That is so not true. What other situation in life 
is a person or, or an animal never over threshold. Okay, little kids, just stay in the house. We never need to play any sports. You can't go out. You can never be um, um, too excited. It's terrible. It's the worst thing for you. No, no, no. We can put every one of my sessions, the dog get to right to where they're over threshold. Then we bring them down a little bit. Okay. It's good to get dogs up there and meeting dogs and, and, and being a little tripped out and then bring them down, or at least the dogs that come to me, it's good for them to do that. So you're going to see a lot more of growling at the camera person. Maybe you can hear it. Maybe you can't. Guy gives a little correction. A lot of this session is going to be about when to correct and when not to correct. When to let him express himself and when not. When do you let your... So this guy had corrected a lot of the barking and lunging, which I get. You saw his, his freak outs. I'm, I'm, I'm big into correcting... Ground the camera person more. I'm big into correcting behaviors that we don't want. But sometimes you got to let it go. All right. Meeting more dogs. Now you're going to see this guy start to really bark. You're going to see me take the leash, but he's going to need to be with a muzzle when I have him on the leash. And here is some original audio. Here's the dog. Let it go. Good job, bro. Good job. Let it go. I know you don't want to let it go. Just let it go. When a dog is under socialized, when a dog is desensitizing to a place and to people and to dogs, you have to let some growls, some barks, some whines go. I'm telling them to let it go. You got to let them get some emotion out so that we let him get it out. And then there'll be a point where we say, okay, we let you get it out. Now we're not letting you get it out anymore. I want you to look how he looks at the camera person again. He's barking, he's freaking out. And right there, you see that? He basically was like out of his mind a little bit. Then he saw the camera person. He said, okay, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to seem like I'm barking at you. Again, the greatness, he doesn't want to bite anybody. And I need to know that throughout these sessions so that I can put these dogs in situations with me or with the camera person being close or with my trainers being close or with the owner so that they, I know they, they at least won't bite a person. Okay, we have to eliminate that from the list. Okay, seeing dogs barking. Now in a minute, I'm gonna take the leash and I'm a little over the barking. We let you bark. We can't give corrections if we don't let the dog get anything out of their system. You can kind of ruin a dog by just constantly correcting them and not letting them ever show any emotion. So I take the leash, we put a muzzle on this. The first time we bring it, now a muzzle's on so we can bring a dog into the area. And that was the first dog he has ever met besides the well, in recent months, as he's gotten a little older, except for the two dogs that are at the house. He just doesn't meet dogs. How is he going to meet dogs? How is this owner or any of you guys going to let your dog meet other dogs when he freaks out like that? So you can use a muzzle. You should use a leash and meeting of nice dogs. Now, this guy doesn't, unfortunately, he just doesn't want to meet them. He doesn't really want to meet people that much. Have you seen him any happiness with people? me, the other trainers, anything. He just wants to be with mommy and daddy all the time. The problem is that's not life. You know, these people want to be able to maybe have a nice dog over to their house or whatnot. So seeing dogs, desensitizing, it's a big deal. Here's some original audio. Let growl go. We can't expect him not to be nervous and tell him to get away a little bit. We got to pick and choose our battles. Can't lunge at this dog. Can't scare this dog. Okay. Okay. Molly. All right. That's cool. So did you notice my correction there? It was a correction. Then there was a little need to get him away from me. What I noticed with the owner, and I think I left it in here, all the corrections were a pull into the owner. You guys have to, people have to be aware of that. If the dog ends up touching mom or dad on the correction, why would they 
stop telling dogs to get out of here when they end up close to mom and dad. You generally want a correction to end up with them away from you, kind of on outside of the circle of trust, because the correction doesn't mean anything to most dogs. They don't really care. They care that they're on the outside looking in a little bit. So just more desensitization to dogs. I have to, I have to force him, right? That's why they came to me is to get this dog around dogs. And if every dog just runs away the minute he looks at him, oh, a smell from another dog, big deal. This dog doesn't care. This golden retriever is like, I, I'll run up to any dog. And it's actually good for the golden retriever to know it can't run up to every dog too. All right, back to original. I don't think Molly has any fear, so I want you to just kind of let, let the leash go a little bit and let her like cruise around him. Yeah, it's your friend. <laughs> It just felt right to let him flip. Yeah. It just felt right. Was it right? 90% sure, but it could have been wrong. I should have corrected it. We got to choose, man. We can't force him to love dogs. I want you to walk past this way right now. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Look at the little one. Good boy. I know, buddy. I know, buddy. I know. Look at. Look at the little one. I know that wasn't towards me. I just didn't want him to run into me and like slam me. Come on, come on, come on. You gonna see them? You wanna see them? I'm fine with that. Come on, come on, come on. Good boy. That's our good boy. That's our good boy. I know, I know, I know. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There's Princey. Boy, that's a good boy. That's such a good boy. Seeing your friends, seeing your friends. Yeah, they're all your friends. They're all your friends. That's right. Yes, good boy. So knowing when to correct Knowing when not to correct wow. is very key to getting your dog with other dogs. You saw, mul you saw me give some corrections. You saw me let him kind of tell another dog to get out of here. The whole time we are also socializing, sort of, de at least desensitizing him with big dogs, with little dogs, with not neuter dogs. You can see him with Prince right there. Oh, a smell to Prince. Okay, so he's he's been smelled by a dog one time been okay with it another time he got a little get out of here other dog he smelled another dog he did a air smell of prince there's an there's a air there's a smell of a little dog this is the way to get this dog to be better with other dogs dogs don't get good when, with other dogs unless they learn about them smell them get touched by them touch them understand what hair feels like the other dog's hair look at them look at the little white dog look at the big black dog and a lay down right there is a good sign as he lays down from the other dogs so now you're going to see us introduce like a little dog to him we're going to bring that little dog in i just think it's funny this little dog look at him he's like what is going on he, he doesn't think that dog's mean that dog was never actually barked at him i don't think so but look at this little dog i just think it's funny hey guys if this video helped you please subscribe to this channel. Um, if you have any comments, write them in the comment box. These owners were great owners. This guy was no nonsense. He, he, he knows how to deal with a Connie Corso. 
He was the both of them. Both of them were awesome. But again, if this video helped you, helped you with body language, helped you with your big strong dog, hit that subscribe button.